In the spring of 1966, a visionary vehicle was launched. It soared through our imaginations on its way to galaxies unheard of. As far as we know, its prime mission was to make us think. Hello, I'm Nichelle Nichols. The last time we were together, I was aboard the Starship Enterprise. As Uhura, the communications officer on Star Trek, I saw more planets than Copernicus ever dreamed of. Not long ago, EduQuest, the IBM Educational Systems Company, invited me to join them on a journey of profound importance. EduQuest took me on a journey into the future of education. Star Trek may have been fiction, but our children are reality. They are our future. I would like to buy a piece of fruit, please. What kind of fruit would you like? An apple. It cost a quarter. One nickel, two nickels, three nickels, four nickels, and a quarter. No, five nickels and a quarter. Hi, Alex. Hi. Hi, Carla. Hi. Computers and communication technology have pushed learning beyond classroom walls. Teachers have become coaches in multicultural cooperative learning environments, encouraging students to use language, share ideas, and examine different points of view. Good, but you know, I wonder if the other class is going to understand cornflakes. Can anyone think of another way to say that? Mm. Cereal? Cereal. I like that one. Good. Try that. Good. Good. Yeah, I like that better. Mm-hmm. Technology helps teachers help children to actively construct their own knowledge. And technology helps administrators promote parental involvement and lifelong learning, making school the heart of the community. Mill Creek School, good morning. This is Lou Escobar, Carla's dad. She's in Ms. Fletcher's first grade class. Hello there, Mr. Escobar. Did you get the message Ms. Fletcher left on Carla's computer? Yes, I did. What do you need? Well, it seems that Ms. Fletcher wants to schedule a meeting to let you know of Carla's progress. Let me see what her schedule is like. She has an opening at 1.30 and 3 this afternoon. Would you be able to come by the school at either time, Mr. Escobar? No, but I tell you what, we have a video phone in the family center here at work. I can take a late lunch and she can call me at 1.30. That'd be okay? I'll put it on her schedule. Uh, your number there is 787-3312, is that right? That's right. Thank you, Mr. Escobar. Thank you. Hi, John. Any word from Medicare on the school's health center expansion? No, not yet. Where are we on the new schedules? Well, I put the uh, social issues class on Thursday like we decided, but it conflicts with the parenting class. Take a look, see what you think. Thanks, John. Do you have time to put the schedules up in my office? We'll talk about it. Sure, I do. Okay. Aha, I see the problem. Let's try moving the parenting class to Wednesday night. But now it uh, conflicts with the literacy class. Is there any reason we can't start literacy 30 minutes earlier? I think the room's available. Let me check. Yeah, yes it is. There. Now we have social issues in the arts at 7 o'clock on Thursdays. Make sense? Does to me. Thanks. No problem. Memo format, please. To Lyle Bird. Subject, new, quote, social issues and the arts, quote, class. Paragraph, Lyle, 
We can use time on Thursday evenings, starting at 7 o'clock, to schedule this new Teachers' course. tools are no longer static. They are not isolated in books and manuals. Now teachers depend on technology to expand their effectiveness. They readily access student growth plans and quickly evaluate learning progress. Logarithmic changes. Rodriguez and Barlow aren't getting it. I've got to find a way to get them excited. Resource repository. Elizabeth. She's been helpful to me before. Let's see. Dr. Elizabeth Evans. One of the most effective ways I've found to demonstrate the concept of logarithmic change is to start the students at a computer connected to a microscope. I let them watch simple cell division while the computer extrapolates the changes. Good idea. They're sharp kids. That'll do it. Thank you, Dr. Liz. Most students are quick to understand that any variation in the rate change becomes less a matter of degree and more a matter of the mathematical formula. One of the beauties of technology is that it gives us universal access to integrative learning experiences, no matter where we live. Technology has the ability to span all borders, to reach into remote rural places as readily as it does into crowded inner cities. Greg is a student who has special needs. His teacher knows the school's knowledge systems can motivate his interest. Through creative participation, Greg will expand his critical thinking. This afternoon, Greg will visit an Indonesia that is virtually real. He will move through museums and absorb the imagery of faraway libraries. Wow! He will construct his own interpretation of knowledge through art and music and scientific fact. I need the dancers. Save that. That's a Komodo dragon. Save that. Gamelan players, save that. With the computer as a window to the whole world, learning is an adventure based on broad themes. All of the students' intelligences come into play. Greg is making his journey alone, a solo flight of discovery. But school is also a reflection of a global society, solving problems through teamwork. And through technology, the teammates can be anyone, anywhere. OK, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Let's go. Lisa, uh, are you ready to tell us where you and your partner are in your project? Yes. My partner's name is David Phoenixson at the Anchor Bay School in Alaska. David loves nature and agriculture, and I'm a big sports fan. So what we were doing is investigating the environmental impact of the next Olympics. The first thing I did was look at the reusable facilities at the Olympics held here in Atlanta. David did research on the environmental changes caused by the Olympics in 88 and 92. I've got David on a link, and I'll put him on the big screen so he can tell us what we're talking about. Hi. But first, I saw one of the Iditarod teams in training yesterday. You better tell us what that is, David. It's dog sled racers, you know. Let me show you guys. Mr. Kenwood? He's a math teacher on our team. He took us to see dogs getting trained. We calculated speeds just like the trainers do. But anyway, while I was out there, I got to thinking, they don't have to build stadiums to hold the Iditarod. So maybe it'd be better for the environment if they held more of the Olympics in more natural settings. 
Lisa, if you guys could cross-reference those four... Students are most likely to use the knowledge and perspectives that they construct for themselves. And that kind of learning often accelerates as we move beyond the limits of classrooms and into like real life, home, where families and extended families open the door to lifelong learning. One nickel, two nickels, three nickels, four nickels, five nickels in a quarter. Thank you. I can do that. I know you can. These assignments are fun. Did Miss Fletcher give them to you? Yeah, I talked to her today. I want to try it. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Five nickels and a quarter. Thank you. Right, five nickels and a quarter. That's what I said, Daddy. Oh, you're getting good. Let's go to the grocery store now, and I'll let you help me make sure we get the right change. I can do that. Good. A quarter, please. One nickel. Two nickels. Three. Four nickels. Five nickels. In the quarter. Thank you. Good, Carla. I'm proud of you. Yes. I want to buy another one. Technology is a natural part of the day-to-day -day world of education. It's simply there to help leaders innovate, to help create unprecedented opportunities for teaching and learning, and to help students like never before. Now, with this group, we're going to tell another story. And this time, it's going to be a video story about the future. What do you think about that? All right, who has an idea about the future? I'm going to be a teacher. Very good. I want to drive a train. The future is full of promise for all of us. And this is the crew that will take us there. Alex and Carla and all the rest will make their voyages in the pursuit of knowledge. And the journey begins with the tools we give them starting today. How far they will travel, who knows? But this I will tell you for sure. The vehicle that launches them into their future must be education. Perhaps they'll call their starship EduQuest. I'm Michelle Nichols. Bon voyage. <laughs> <laughs>